Garden Prayer. Welcome to a collection of thoughts and experiences from the June Ladies' Breakfast in the Gardens. As you watch the flowers gently nodding in the breeze and the trees with their new and tender leaves swaying a bit, this way and that way, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Now sit back, enjoy your coffee, while letting your mind travel into the gardens. From my front porch, my favorite summertime breakfast and coffee spot. God's Garden. Did God create us in the spring when the earth was warm and starting to sing? Was the sun shining bright as he started to form an intricate being, this world to adorn? We are all different in colors and shapes and each one of us have our individual traits. I look over God's world and amaze at the show for his garden is not finished and still trying to grow. As I look over this gathering at your bright shining faces, I say yes, there is but one God above. We are in and part of his garden. Cherish it with love. A beautiful verse on a garden sign. The kiss of the sun for pardon, the song of the birds for mirth. One is nearer God's heart in a garden than anywhere else on earth. I thank you, God. My gardens are doing well and many flowers are blooming as well as the wisteria, iris, and lilac. I have some of my vegetable garden planted, but still need to get some more things. The rain has come at a perfect time, for which I thank God. Even the weeds are multiplying. Of course, I could do without them, but it gives me exercise to go back and forth from front to back on both my yard and my neighbor's yard. Even that is good for me at this time of staying at home. It's hilarious to watch the squirrels figuring out what to do with the new leaves on the trees, running up and down the branches, taking a bit of maneuvering now, but it's amazing how quickly they catch on, how marvelous and smart God's creatures are. Praise him, all creatures here below. There will be no gathering, but we'll think of all of us and pray for God's blessings. I'm amazed at the clematis. It was pink last spring and offered very few blooms, but whatever, I'll take it. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. When I observe the tenacity, resilience, and perseverance of plants in my garden, and in varying environments around the world, I think about how these observations connect with our personal struggles during the pandemic times. A passage of scripture that encourages us for a time such as this is found in Romans 3, 3b-5. Knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope, and hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has given it to us. We have just celebrated Pentecost Sunday when the church began with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Still today, we can invite and welcome the Holy Spirit to guide us our thoughts and our actions. I find scriptures and songs of the church to be very helpful. Forget me not. Many years ago, an acquaintance of mine passed away. At his funeral, his wife gave out a package of forget me nots. Every year, these flowers show up everywhere in my garden. And as a result, I think of him every spring. I definitely have not forgotten him. Beautiful violas. I had a pot of violas last spring and summer that bloomed valiantly all season. It brought me joy just looking at their delicate shapes and colors. In the fall, I emptied the pot and threw what remained of the plant in my compost bin to begin recycling it into new soil for the next year. All part of nature's cycle. When I went out to my compost bin to throw some new matter in for this spring, I was amazed to find that miraculously the violas had survived the winter open to the elements with barely any soil clinging to the roots and were trying hard to bud into new growth. I rescued the little plant and repotted it in a planter basket along with a few other tiny flower seedlings. And lo and behold, I have beautiful violas again. It fills me with amazement how God instills such a need to survive in all living things and in the beauty and the growth and thriving. Surely, as the saying goes, we are closer to God in a garden 
than anywhere else on earth. A picture is worth a thousand words. With every new day, I think my view is getting greener and I feel like I'm living in the middle of a botanical garden. This is a wonderful surprise because this is our first summer in our new home. I am completely mesmerized by the beauty that surrounds us. God's Garden. This year, with all of our programs and activities canceled and everyone encouraged to stay at home, my calendar is virtually empty. And one of the beneficiaries of all this extra time is my garden. Actually, I'm the beneficiary of the time spent among soil, foliage, flowers, birdsong, and ba as my background music. There are so many spiritual lessons to be found among growing things. I have a variety of columbine in my garden, this beautiful starburst petals in pink with white edges. The only problem is that their flower heads hang down at the ends of their stems, denying me the delight of looking into their lovely faces. Unless, of course, I lay face up underneath them. Well, that would be a little uncomfortable, especially as they particularly like to grow along the rough stone edging. But thanks to the modern technology of my cell phone camera, now I can get a photographic image of their floral smiles by setting it to selfie mode and aiming it straight up, right underneath the flowers with the bright blue sky as the background. The red chestnut, on the other hand, holds its glorious flower cones up high in the air, sharing its seasonal beauty for all the world to see. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, and I will yet praise him, my Savior, my God. Psalm 42, verse 5. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.